But why don't we dive in? Because we have quite the show for you today. Um, again, didn't hate, didn't loathe the film. Yeah. Just didn't uh, love it. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed parts. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my media analysis glasses and they say, whew, what a mess. So <laughs> Don't Worry Darling is from 2022 and it's about. While her husband leaves home every day to work in a top secret facility, a young 1950s housewife begins to question her life when she notices strange behavior from the other wives in the neighborhood. It's directed by Olivia Wilde. This is her mm -hmm. second directorial debut situation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I saw somewhere. Cool. That's great. <laughs> Love that for her. Um, <laughs> but let me, let's explore what this film is. I will say that this episode will contain spoilers because I do want to talk about the twist. I think there mm -hmm. are things to be said. Like, because the twist... It really influences how you feel about the film, because if you went the majority of the film and you didn't get the twist, you could kind of make up your own ending and maybe it was better. Um, yeah. Maybe you can make sense of the world better than what that ending did. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I will say I watched this film twice. So I watched it once on my own because I was like, I want to see what the hubbub's about. And then I watched it for the ghouls. And watching it the second time, knowing what the twist is, was pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Because you catch things. <laughs> so uh -huh. that was really fun. So I recommend that if you can still make it a second time, maybe watch it with some folks who are all in on the joke, maybe. And then uh, it, it might be a little more fun. You know, yeah, you can just like pick up on some of the more social cues that are happening subtly in the background. There's a lot of language. It's the up. dialogue for me. There's a lot of language. There's a yeah. lot of word choice. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. Have a don't worry, darling party, like themed party. All right. You did it with Great Gatsby. <laughs> yeah. You did it with um, any other inappropriate thing like Squid Game. You can do it with Don't yeah. Worry Darling. And what a what a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, invite me. So <laughs> here is uh, a good rundown, a summary of what happens in the film. And then I'll, I'll warn you when we get to the twist. But Alice and Jack are in perfect love. Uh, and Absolutely. they live in this sure. life. Hmm? Sorry, I'm just agreeing with you. Oh. <laughs> they are in perfect love, okay? And they yeah. live in the idyllic suburban desert wonderland known as Victory. This is kind of scary. That already mm -hmm. is like warning bells. I don't know why. Jack works for the <laughs> mysterious, undefined Victory Project, of which this little suburbs is named, while Alice maintains their perfect home. She makes him breakfast in the morning and sees him off with a sweet kiss on the cheek, waving goodbye as Jack leaves in his fancy car, along with every other man who lives in Victory as they drive mm -hmm. off into the nothingness of the desert to somewhere <laughs> there's no roads they drive into the desert with purpose <laughs> yeah like how does there not more accidents is what i want to know because like they really are just like zigzagging in nothing they just like, what do you mean? they love it which yeah. is you think they'd be more careful because there's danger to them anyway yeah. they're going to <laughs> do some seemingly important and oh so top secret uh things for the victory project at headquarters yeah. which um we are told numerous times is dangerous they're keeping us safe it is safe in mm -hmm. town so don't go over there only the yeah. men are strong enough to go over there <laughs> in the cars <laughs> Yeah, classic oh industry town. Love it. Yes, I, I I was sad that we there wasn't more about industry towns, but there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Uh, so Alice spends her days lavishing in luxury. She takes the charming trolley to the town with her fellow housewives and besties. They window shop and charge their husbands cards, and they dance in perfect unison during ballet class. And when her day of fun is wrapped, she cooks a several course meal and meets her husband at the door with his favorite drink. And mm -hmm. romance. They have they have intercourse kind of. 
there's no penetration yeah. involved just so folks know um yeah. but it's like it's supposed to be hot it felt really uncomfortable but it's supposed to be hot yeah. um and as you can imagine all is not well in victory something sinister is afoot and when alice notices the slow descent into instability of former friends and only black woman in the film margaret things start to become increasingly bizarre so the film leans heavily on the charm and nostalgia of the Mad Men, Stepford Wives surrealism, inspiring a se seemingly obvious commentary of the era of nuclear families and casserole. Um, yeah. It oscillates between 40s, 50s, 60s inspiration um, from like the music choice to like the appliances that they have. It's like modern, but not. <laughs> yeah. One guy raves about having a record player. And he's like, oh, this one's yeah. so cool. I think um, it's like the version of America that like crazy people, <laughs> excuse me, like, like uh, will say when they're like, make America great again. It's that. For sure. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's very specifically the America that was polished up and wrapped in like a nostalgia bow. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the areas that is like heavily nostalgia like yeah rose colored glasses um yeah. it's a it's a world that, with actual like suicide and drug use and alcoholism poverty, like no one was okay mental unhealth like there's so yeah. like it, it's rampant <laughs> with and none of that's there, no and that's not what we're allowed <laughs> to remember right yeah. um instead we're, we remember the capitalism right we remember selling things we remember um status and mm -hmm. and this idea of like the modern family and what it's supposed to be and the fulfilling of roles that were put upon you um one of my all-time favorite films ever is pleasantville um mm -hmm. <laughs> which does this so well um so highly recommend if that's something that you're into or maybe you haven't seen it i love pleasantville um live for it uh but <laughs> as much as this film is it has a lot of potential because it is inspired by these different nostalgia heavy eras that, as we were just mm -hmm. saying, um, is so cloaked in this like safety bubble of like, remember when things were perfect and they weren't, they, they weren't. Um, but they it were doesn't really <laughs> do any conversation. Like there's no conversations about that. It's just like, look how mm -hmm. pretty it was. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> we just like are, you know, marketing off of how pretty it was and neglecting all of the lead poisoning. Um, yeah. So throughout Alice's mundane existence and the slow realization of something being off, we, each cut, we catch glimpses of a haunting dance scene. So uh, Wild edits in these moments of the surreal dance routines, like in black and white, to create this feeling of unease for, for viewers. Mm. Um that like is jarring and allows you to never really feel safe and certain about what's yeah. happening at victory. Um, which I mean, personally, I think it would have been fun to believe it for a little bit, <laughs> but yeah. it's like right out the gate that like something's awry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, what is it? <laughs> and so um, this like haunting da dance scene is one in direct opposition to the uniformed, graceful movement of the wives in class. This one is staggered and a canary to things being wrong. Um, mm. And after Alice witnesses the attempted suicide of Margaret, again, the only black woman in this film and the first death quotations, because yeah. we don't know if she dies. Um, this is a woman she and the other wives have dismissed as crazy, hysterical, and worthy of dismissal so easily. Uh, mm -hmm. There's very little compassion towards Margaret. And the thing about it is that Margaret had sensed something was wrong. Uh, she had taken things into her own hands to prove that, and it caused her great pain, the loss of her son, and the trust of her community. And so she was the first one to be like, something ain't right here, and was doing something. And... The way that they try to, the the whoever's in charge are trying to silence her, they didn't even have to work that hard. <laughs> Everyone no. already was there. Because, like, she was threatening their way of life by yeah. saying something. And they were like, wrong. go away immediately. Like, it, it sounded like she just started acting weird one day, and they're like, all right, we never talk to them again. No forgiveness for them ever. Yeah. <laughs> Just it like, no, long. yeah, no compassion, no understanding. Um, and after witness, uh, Alice witnesses a plane crash, 
with a plane that resembles very similarly the toy plane that Margaret's son had been playing with in a desert before he went missing, Alice finds herself in the desert too, seeking answers. And what she finds is more questions and her own dose of gaslighting. Because now it's her yep. turn. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Margaret, thinking she could trust in Alice, uh, isn't she too becoming aware of the problems in this society? Uh, only to be shunned. Uh, and... You reprimanded by Alice, who is trying to uphold the status quo. Um, and even after her attempted suicide presumed death, uh, she is dismissed, forgotten, and overwritten. And now that Alice knows something is up, she's the chosen one. Now yep. it's a problem. Yep, because it's a problem for her specifically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, which I will get into when we talk about the themes. Um, but just so you know what's going on. So Margaret's death, or Oma's death, we again uh, is mixed with bizarre glitch in the ma mixed with bizarre glitch in the matrix moments like Alice finding an egg in her carton to be nothing but a husk or her being smushed between a pane of glass and her walls in a vivid suffocating mm -hmm. daydream um, which was <laughs> awful <laughs> I was like what it's like really cool uh, yeah. I did really enjoy just like that cinematography moment of her like scratching at the thing and then it squishes her cool yeah um yeah i guess it like gives like a nod to what happens as the twist yeah i mean it's suffocating right and it's these weird glitch of the matrix things right mm -hmm. um something isn't right um and specifically something isn't right with alice right something's happening to her reality um which is you know related to, to, to gaslighting right yeah. um so this paves the way for alice to begin digging into the truth of victory and she be begins confronting anyone and everyone crying out to be heard only to met be met with more gaslighting and the occasional you're being hysterical he literally <laughs> says that uh which yeah. is a phrase that like we shouldn't use anymore because who does like just because your film is supposed to take place in the four fifth sixties, uh, doesn't mean you have to write like it is. Yeah, <laughs> it was like that was so. It just felt so on the nose, like yeah. and not in a fun way. Like it's almost like they're saying like, "Don't gaslight me," <laughs> which is not funny unless it's in bodies, bodies, bodies. When it was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> colors made is made. So. Uh, what is actually happening at Victory? We're all dying to know. What's the meaning of the plane? Why was her egg empty? Why did the cult-like leader, Frank, who somehow finds time to not only run an important life-changing company and community, but also star in both radio and TV programs all day, uh, yeah. get off on watching Alice and her husband uh, have relations in his room? What a weird scene. Um, yeah. Honestly, what's his obsession with her? Too. Yeah, he says I don't some know stuff. why we needed it. It was really weird. It's super weird, and it didn't do anything. I, yeah, yeah. He's like, I thought you would challenge me, and then she does, and he's mad about it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, what's the deal yeah. with the other woman? Great news! You can watch this whole film and never get a single answer. In fact, you'll have more questions. Woo! Because it's twist time, baby. Do, 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 do. So spoilers, if you spoilers. <laughs> if you want to wait uh, for the twist, uh, why don't you go watch a film? It's on Netflix. And come back. And come back to this moment in time. And <laughs> starting now, <laughs> we will do our twist. Um, you can also skip ahead to cat section if you like, but I'll be talking about stuff. Um, so the big reveal of Don't Worry Darling is on the surface interesting. I think it is fun. As a short film or even a short story, I think it would have been brilliant. I would yeah. have had a good time because I you wouldn't have had to do so much fluff. It mm -hmm. could have been nice and concise. And it, yeah. even as uh, a Reddit post, <laughs> it could have been brilliant. So yeah. for a film so reminiscent of Stepford Wives, I enjoyed the twist being different than I expected. Um, and watching a second time and knowing that twist, it really had me paying attention to subtle dialogue choices like um there's this moment where frank who's like the leader of victory and he has this big speech and he says don't you want like wouldn't you want to run uh and he stops and like as if it's a full sentence but then he keeps going and says something like away from your your uh 
like mundane life or whatever <laughs> like twisted yeah. but he's like don't you want to run um and then there's another time where they're trying to remind uh alice of her friends and bunny says like oh you know her she's always pregnant and i was like yeah because she's like stuck in perpetuity yeah. as as a pregnant person um yeah. <laughs> so there's like there's just stuff that uh i notice uh the second time watching that was cool but um boy did this twist muck it all up so alice isn't a housewife she's actually a surgeon okay yep. an important human being not that housewives yeah. are not important i don't say that right but she's a surgeon she's saving lives yeah, okay it's a big job. she and jack had been in love actually which is more than we can say about some of the other wives here uh yeah. and after he lost his job alice took on more shifts because she cares about them. And yeah. she's like, whatever, I love, like, I'm going to work my butt off to provide for us. And because I love caring for people outside mm -hmm. of the simulation. Um, yeah. And so Jack falls victim to a toxic masculinity and incel podcast, of which there are so many. Uh, so many. Though Frank is fashioned after Jordan Peterson, which is a disgusting, pathetic man. Um, yeah. And Olivia Wilde said in an interview with Maggie Gyllenhaal, we base that character on the this insane man, Jordan Peterson, who's this pseudo intellectual hero to the incel community. Um, and then Wilde had to explain to Jen Gyllenhaal, Maggie Gyllenhaal, uh, what an incel was, because bless her heart, she doesn't know, <laughs> um, which refers, uh, which means involuntarily celibate, um, basically disenfranchised, mostly white men who believe they are entitled to sex from women. Um, mm -hmm. It's like the good guy times a bajillion. Even worse than yeah. that, they don't even think they have to be good. They literally yeah, just they, think their existence. Yeah, they're just like, I am owed sex because I'm better. Yeah, because yeah, because I'm a man, and um, I'm insecure because I'm not better, and that motivates violence. Yeah, I'll say I've never listened or read or partaken in anything jordan peterson has said so mm. the influence is a little lost i mean like i got the gist of what kind of man he was without knowing who jordan yeah. Pe peterson is but um i'll say frank was an interesting character if not kind of lost and that's not to say anything about the acting of it i think it was written that way and mm -hmm. he's supposed to be this like mystical undefined being that's just all powerful but then mm -hmm. he wasn't powerful at all um yeah. i will say well, it's like the cult leader right but like not with the everyone having to be with him mm -hmm. time for sure <laughs> except it seemed like i was gonna get there um yeah. <laughs> and yeah i think the having him on the tv and radio is important because there mm -hmm. is like that's a tactic in cults to um infiltrate like every waking moment of your life with the voice of like the leader or like the the words of the leader jim jones did that um he would broadcast all day um yeah so that's absolutely believable and then yeah i think the facade of being so powerful and also like it's definitely culty in like the way that his wife is like he's brilliant everyone's like oh my god he's the most brilliant like incredibly intelligent, mm -hmm. remarkable human being. Ugh. Yeah. It was so uncomfortable every time they said that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like all the other men too are like his enforcers without like being told that they need to do that. Like because they are hoping for some sort of power themselves. And that's also very much like or they don't want to be disowned by this new world that they feel connected to mm -hmm. either um which yeah. is super cool to you. because frank the very real monster podcaster informs his listeners of a new project which can transport you in the woman of your choosing i will say that of your choosing she doesn't yeah. do choose she has no choice um and a woman uh, you as a strong, powerful, and deserving man are owed. Uh, and we can bring you to this idyllic simulation of victory. So this is where we get the, the plot that is like Swiss cheese. It's full of holes. Because um, <laughs> this is where it gets super sticky and mucked up. So Jack, in, so essentially the whole thing is that victory is a simulation. 
and Alice is yeah. in that. So she had been really cool, and now she's been essentially brainwashed, uh, Clockwork Orange style, uh, to be an obedient housewife in this simulation. But the way that it works is where things get really sloppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it doesn't hold up under a microscope. So Jack, now with a job, like, outside of the simulation, he has a job now that he didn't have yeah. before. Because he, that was the whole problem. <laughs> so he couldn't get a job, but now he's got one. And it's enough. It's a, it's a job that can afford him access to an advanced technology like this. It has to be a lot. And he's slaving away, right? Yeah. Um, he also takes full responsibility for Alice's life and care, like, well-being. Um, and is only allowed in the simulation for a certain amount of time, which is why all the men leave in the morning to go to work. That's the yeah. time they're allotted, which, honestly, I think him having to afford her... Like, being in there would have been enough explanation for why he leaves. I think it's weird yeah. that they're like, you're only allowed in here sometimes. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's like, if the job is to, like, make sure that their body is not atrophying outside but of the simulation. But that's not what his job is. He leaves. It's not. He has to go somewhere else. He, yeah, that doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, he's like, I go to work and I hate it. I yeah. hate it and I'm doing that because I want to be with you in here. So, yeah. yeah, so he leaves. That's one of the other big problems, right? Is that he leaves. No one asks about her. She's gone. She just disappears. Uh, where's her family? Her friends? Her coworkers? Right? Yeah. And um, if Alice does awaken in the end, because it's kind of like, it's insinuated that she wakes up. We hear her, a breath, an intake, a breath. But she could be waking up in the simulation, or she could be waking up outside the simulation. Yeah. Um, uh, if she does wake up, in the real world, her body is definitely atrophied and full of bed sores. So there's no way she'd be able to leave before the the victory people come and get to silence her. Yeah. They're on the way. <laughs> Regardless of Frank, like Frank isn't the only one who's operating this thing. That's not how technology works. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a whole team and there has to be some security behind it. There's yeah. just like, and it's not just in the system. You didn't abduct yeah. all these people. Well, that's what like the people in the red jackets are, is that like, their backup, I guess. Mm -hmm. So they have to exist in the real world. I saw them as um, code. I saw oh, them as not maybe. real. Because That's fair. Uh, they're always where they need to be. In a oh, weird, different yeah, that way makes sense. that I think. I think the bus, the trolley driver was also code, if I'm being honest. Mm. Um, that's why he was so much like, I can't go over there. Yeah. I can't yeah, do this that. This is like, I'm only allowed to be here. <laughs> yeah. And then like you're within your coding aren't allowed to actually communicate that in a different way. Yeah. Um, but then you also have to wonder why did the glitches happen in the first place? Because like, why was the plane the same as Margaret's son? Is Frank just really mm -hmm. bad at developing code? Um, it is, did he make those problems for Alice like as a toy? Um, and why? <laughs> and I guess, these... like, as a control thing? I don't oh, know. It's very weird. But, like, why? Said, so she, used... she was fine. She was, she, yeah. so things are starting to look off before she even did the, because the whole thing is that, um, when she sees the airplane go down and she goes into the desert, she goes to headquarters, which is where they leave. They mm -hmm. touch a thing and they leave the simulation. The husbands do. So she left the simulation, but Jack was there to put her back under. Mm -hmm. So the problem is she kills Jack <laughs> in this last bit of time. Um, and in murdering him, that's the panic is that they're like, no one can put her back in. Yeah. So if she wakes up, she's going to like, what? <laughs> What's going to go on? So yeah. things are happening that led her to that led her to woke up because I was like, Oh, maybe if she woke up one time or maybe Jack did something outside of the simulation, like him singing the song, it would inspire her to start glitching, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, Why is there all these glitches and all these questions aside, the ending is lackluster and ultimately disappointing. It provides an answer without showing its work. Cause it showed us all this stuff that didn't matter. Right. Um, as viewers, we never feel the relief of understanding of watching the film play back and knowing now why those things occurred. Right. I think yeah. of Saw, like when you have the, the music playing and then, you know, <laughs> you have uh, Danny Glover looking back on the history of, of the film and seeing like, oh, that's who that's who that was. That's what that was. We don't get that moment. We don't have that relief moment. 
Mm -hmm. of knowing what the F this whole film was. All of those things were red herrings or just inconsequential um, that she felt like that she fell upon. Right. The plane isn't answered. The egg isn't answered. The glasses and yeah. the dancing isn't answered. It is so yeah. weird. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, flaws in the code, I guess, is what they're trying to write it off as. Or even just like our brain's sensory responses, which wouldn't happen if you're in a simulation. Yeah. In I the just... same way they would in real world. Yeah. <laughs> so, because like you could argue like PTSD or whatever, like your brain picks up on sensory cues. Right. That's super valid. Your memory is haphazard through that. But in a simulation, you're not actually experiencing those sensory cues. So like it wouldn't make sense other than the auditorial ones. It wouldn't make sense for those to trigger memories. Yeah, like it has to be like within the code of some sort. Like it just seems odd. Um, And so like after you've watched this whole family and watch this twist and to have the answer to the dread that was building for audience and Alice alike to be so lackluster, it's really disappointing. And I was actually reminded of the story of The Lamp, (laughs) which is uh, Uh the story told by uh, a Redditor. I'm sorry, I don't remember um other than like the story stuck with me but it's the story of a a redditor who lived an entire life after an altercation only to one day wake up and find something off about his lamp he's like something is wrong with this lamp and he can't figure it out and he ends up neglecting like life to stare at this lamp and try to figure it out and ultimately what he discovers and decides upon is that the lamp isn't real and once he figures that out nothing is real and he wakes up from a coma (laughs) <laughs> and that to me is like oh my gosh like you just lived like a whole other life somewhere so mm-hmm. like i think that would have been cool if those little things like the song is a great reveal because she mm-hmm. has a song stuck in her head um that she sings all the time and they're like was that a lullaby and it's a song that he sang for her and that he would sing outside when he was cleaning her up the times when he was home and not in the simulation yeah. so um like that was cute, but all the other stuff didn't make sense. Like it would have been cool to have those tie-ins to like what's happening outside yeah. um, and how it's impacting her or to even know anything about the code. Yeah. Super weird. So in fact, uh, uh, like upon, um, sorry, I got so lost in my thing. Uh, this twist in a short Reddit thread is far more compelling and emotional than the revealing moment offered by Wilde. It's a sad gotcha moment that leaves us more confused than satisfied. And that is really only the first of many issues that I have with this film. Um, yeah. <laughs> that lackluster part is like, whatever, even if like, it, like, I think genuinely there's some cool aspects to it that mm-hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> interesting um and it was an unexpected twist i genuinely i didn't see that uh and i was like oh okay so no it's fine (laughs) right exactly so here's where i think the majority of this film suffers from um white feminism which is Mm -hmm. like uh, when i was talking about this um with my partner i was like you know (laughs) there's only so much that we can like hold people accountable for sometimes it's like this is her life right this is like her yeah. lens that she sees the world and she has no business telling somebody else's story um yeah but again that kind of just it just kind of tattles on her <laughs> in that like yeah. this is how she sees the world this is her lens um mm-hmm. like she really thought she was saying something and doing something right yeah so it was like so it had never powerful. been done before that's like the biggest thing and it's such a letdown because you're really miss you like you're you're falling victim to the same issues that uh, yeah. we have fallen victim to as a society for generations mm-hmm. for all the waves of feminism that we've had um and so like as much as wild was trying to say something with this film her head absolutely in the right place i see where she was coming from i think she completely missed the mark um in all the ways she attempted to make this a feminist piece what she did create was a white feminist place which is historically harmful to the movement as a whole because if we're not trying to liberate all of us then we liberate none of us um Mm -hmm. and 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 in that is where like a lot of the core issues are and so here's why i think (laughs) this is more white feminism than it is feminism (laughs) as a whole because the integral part of white feminism is this understanding of things being wrong because they have now become inconvenient to them right we Mm -hmm. see that with alice 
before it was fine. It was idyllic. It was wonderful. But now it's a problem because I'm suffering from it. Um, yeah. We discussed this at length um, in our Handmaid's Tale episode. But further, with that limited understanding of injustice, there's concurrently a desire to maintain the status quo just enough to shift the power to them. Um, yeah. Because we, if, if we dismantle the system completely, then how will they benefit? Right. So we we just want to change it enough that we have the power. Wild in that same interview with Jalen Hall uh, explained about the incels that they believe that society has now robbed them, that the idea of feminism is working against nature and that we must be put back into the correct place, which isn't untrue but is ignoring the nuance of the specific stand. Um, when I see this theme of men are bad <laughs> or this anti-feminist patriarchal society, I see one of the barriers of progress in two specific characters. Um, yeah. First is Frank's wife, Shelley, and then later is Allie's best, Alice's best friend, um, played by Wilde herself, Bunny. These two yeah. women are the white feminists, um, which is funny because yeah. Shelley isn't, um, but they're the problem <laughs> with... The feminism in this film they're the barriers you yeah know. and they're not conveyed that way that's the problem is like at least with handmaid's tale we know that the wives aren't good suck yeah. <laughs> right? we know that they're a problem and a barrier right these two women are supposed to like they're not great right they're they're arguably like villains in the film but at the end we're supposed to feel something about them yeah. <laughs> and that's where I'm like, no, no. So in the dramatic ending where Alice finds herself fleeing for her life after murdering her husband uh, when she realized the truth, Frank discusses how to stop her over the phone before Shelley, his wife, murders him. And the murder is super confusing uh, yeah. and completely unfounded. Because <laughs> yeah. with Alice, we saw the evidence in the slow realization. Um, she has been like crying for help this whole film. So Jack's murder felt justified and expected. Um, it was still yeah. a weird way that it happened. Um, it's a very intense moment. Again, Florence is amazing. Uh, yeah. But Shelley's was perplexing. Uh, even more confusing is her whispering to him, now it's my turn. Turn to what, do yeah. what, hun? Like, what do you... <laughs> run the <laughs> simulation, yeah, I to guess. to run victory. Like, are you real? Do you know what this is? Uh... <laughs> like for a woman who had throughout the entirety of this film praised her husband's brilliance like it could have been you know out of safety but she yeah. gets aggressive with it it was unnecessary the way she was super hard about it um and that that's goes past just uh self-preservation um <laughs> second of all um she does that and in just a, a few scenes prior publicly scolds alice for her outburst so it's a bizarre move for her to murder him because we had no inclination that she felt any type of way we also don't yeah. know if she like has come to and that maybe she is a powerful woman like we don't get the stepford wives we don't learn yeah. who all these women were like because no, the only one that matters <laughs> It is Alice and Bunny. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, we never learn. Um, and it's just like, it, it has this question of like, what would she gain except control of this machine? Um, yeah. And a machine that she would undoubtedly keep running. And is it that she's going to put the men in there now against their will? Is she going to have it so that ladies can go in there if they want? Like, I don't get her motivation or why she's doing that. Yeah. Um, and then Bunny, we learn, has known about the simulation all along. She's in it willingly um, and one of the only women to be here willingly, which she tells us in this heartbreaking scene is to be with her kids, um, her kids that she spends a lot, not a lot of time with. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no. be honest, they're not they're like even Alice says it like her kids like her more and it's kind of a joke but it's kind of true like she plays with them once and she always seems like she's annoyed by them yeah so it's yeah it, it doesn't it's surprising to have that be the reveal when it doesn't seem like she was there to be a mom it seemed like she was there to like hang out with all these other women who and she knows are being subjugated and she doesn't care yeah because she because <laughs> as someone who's in on the joke she's a part of the system yeah. and she's a part of the control it's benefiting yeah. her 
So why yeah. change it? So she knows the truth, guess, the ugly yeah. injustice and pain of it, and still works to uphold the system for her benefit. And she degrades the other women if they falter and pushes the narrative hard and more successfully than some of the men do because she's a fellow woman. Because uh -huh. why don't we trust one who's just like us and is trapped here? Right. Yeah. Um, and she reminds me of the wives in Handmaid's Tale or even um, in the end, she reminded me of Rose from Get Out. Yeah, I honestly I felt like everyone was Rose from Get Out. I was I was hoping, to be honest, that Jack had a reveal like that. He didn't feel sinister mm. enough. He felt like a dope <laughs> all the time. A and puppy. he kind of was yeah. like he was lost. But it's like, why him? What did the system yeah. gain to have? He doesn't have money. He doesn't have intelligence. What did he give to this? How did he get in here? So I was, His I, belief, was hope, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, I was just hoping because there's not a lot of men. Yeah. I was hoping that he would have a sinister turn that the at the end when she's like confessing and he's like, I loved you, blah, blah, that he would have like had to pull the keys out of the purse moment. Yeah, Which, that's what fair. an amazing scene. And I, again, <laughs> there's um, there's so many references and things that are, are referencing uh, Get Out in this film that doesn't get enough credit because everyone yeah. you know says it's reminiscent of Stepford Wives. For sure it is. Um, but so is Get Out. <laughs> Get Out is also <laughs> reminiscent of Stepford Wives. But there's specific things. So like um, the breathing, there's like this breathing motif in times of tension, which is straight out of appeal yeah. um like a cinematography book um and just like the way things are framed and shot and revealed um but also i think about <laughs> the quote from peel when he mentioned there are no uh good white people in get out and i think yeah. there are no good people in don't worry darling um yeah so when she revealed her truth at first i was sad to hear about her children but then immediately i felt betrayed like really betrayed because yeah. the lengths this woman went to the harm she knows is being done. And still she maintains the status quo for her own benefit. Like she yeah, was people so are dead because of her. Yeah. People are dead because <laughs> of her. Literally, She is so horrible to Margaret and shuts them down and she controls all the women. That's literally what she's, it, it's not about the kids. It's that she gets to control the women and be at the top. She has to have power. Yeah. Ugh. So <laughs> this is where I come to intersectionality. Never heard of her um, section of this. Because we already discussed uh, the issues with Margaret's character, who was so quickly dismissed and pushed to the side. And I was incredibly disappointed by her death and the fact that it was the first one. I was like, are we really doing this? Um, uh -huh. And that she became this catalyst for this white woman to then find the truth. Because the truth from Alice's mouth matters so much more. And in several sure. articles and reviews, I saw mention of Alice being the only one who knew what was going on. It was like, and Alice becomes aware, blah, blah, like, <laughs> no. Yeah, they just like forgot about her. It's entirely. exactly what the film was trying to do. And I will shout yeah. out to um, Sophia S. Uh, Pasalis at the Harvard Crimson for actually saying it out loud um, in their article, Don't Worry Darling Review, a drama that's accidentally a comedy, in which they say the film centers on Alice, a white woman inspired to question her surroundings by the discoveries of Margaret, a black woman who serves as a catalyst for char Alice's character development. Um, Don't Worry Darling is ultimately an exploration of white womanhood with a half-hearted attempt at inclusion illustrating a symmetrical experience of femininity that is seemingly possible only between white women um mm -hmm. and not even then <laughs> um yeah. uh and so no one gives her credit for being the first one to notice what was going on um or to question things um and yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> well i was gonna say the biggest thing for me is that her clues are from margaret Margaret starts it all and she doesn't get any credit for that. Um, no. And without like the film having overt tropes, like uh, consistent with the magical Negro like trope, Margaret is still that. Like she, she yeah. doesn't give any words of advice, but she pushes Alice to be something important, um, which again, digs yeah. further into the white feminism lens. Yeah, it's like, it, it's so, at first I was like, I don't even want to give Olivia Wilde credit for making this point that white women will not listen to black women in the feminist movement. Like, I don't think she knows, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that wasn't her 
lens. Um, and it's like, it seemingly unintentionally reaches this point where it pokes white feminism, but doesn't do anything with that. And then like, you think something's happening at first and then they're like, oh no, 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 this woman does not matter. Like, and they, they make that the theme and it feels super gross. So it makes all the reveals feel really lackluster and like icky mm -hmm. because they never cared enough about Margaret to give her the same chance as they gave Pew's character. They never gave her the same care or emotional capacity for growth. Like they literally just disregarded her immediately, did not give her any chance to be free, escape or have autonomy. And I like, as you said, like if we're going to make a film about feminism, it should not come at the cost of the only black woman in the film. Mm -hmm. And it should definitely like, if we are not free, unless we're all free. So it was super icky. Yeah. And for me, it's like Margaret and my most likely had been written as a white woman. Right. Yeah. My name like Margaret. I just but I think that should have been a thought. And that's what yeah. got to me was like it. We've said it before. The second that you put like a black person in your film, you have to think about that. You have to think about the implications of where you're putting them and the way that they're reacting and what you could be saying, even unintentionally. Yeah. It's, and they didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> They didn't. And, and that's yeah, giving, but, honestly giving too much credit. Like it's being too yeah. kind because it really is horrible. It's an awful thing to have like this one black character and their husband to be so like, especially like when we're even talking about incel culture, it's a very white space, right? Uh -huh. it, it comes almost hand in hand with white supremacy, right? Uh -huh. And so the fact that there was a black couple with a son in victory is a big deal. And that by them not even acknowledging that it was a big deal is a gross, like yeah. just misrepresentation of it. And just like a neglect of the world that you're creating. And I like, I wanted to be like, okay, there's not even any queer characters in here. Um, which, okay. Cause incels are super straight and gross, but like, <laughs> at least in Stepford wives, they had the gay Republican and yeah. they talked about, why that was still harmful too. And you could have had, like the husband was a part of the system. Why? How? How was he a part of the system? How yeah. did he get here? Like, I want to know more about him. And it, it, we don't. Well, yeah, because the I characters think cool. were, the characters, like they were probably originally cast as like color, or color blind is what mm -hmm. color blind casting. And it's like, you can't do that now. You need to be intentional about what you do with your stuff. Like, you know, yeah. if you're going to put them in, you need to have people voices there that can help lead yeah. that discussion. I also think like she probably thought like, you know, might have paused when they cast her and they were like, oh, well, that is a character who dies. And then I could see her being like, well, isn't it more racist to not cast her in this role because she would be the first one to die? Like, I could see that logic yeah. twisting someone up. Like, I absolutely could see that. It's gross. It's stupid. But yeah. <laughs> can see that i can see you being like well isn't it it's not okay it's racist how it is right now yeah <laughs> don't do that so my last little piece and we're going to you can i'm sorry you good. <laughs> there's so much to say and even just gonna say all the things i wanted um but there was this all uh, this other thing that caught me when i was when i first watched it and like the reason i watched it because it was it was so silly and it's that no man comes in this film and what a win that must be right ladies um <laughs> So I'll say this, even the white femi feminism is lacking in this film. The film isn't feminist in the slightest because uh, as Wilde was proudly advertising that no men come in this film before its release as like this badge of honor, um, she claims it was due to her not seeing enough female pleasure on screen, which sure, that's true enough. But babe, this is not the place to combat that. <laughs> Like, why would you put it in victory where it's supposed to be bad for the ladies? And you're like, but this place, the ladies get off. <laughs> yeah, which is like, it's horrible for women. It's like, what do you mean? Like, it's supposed what are you to, trying it's to better? tell me? It's better there? Is that what you're arguing? What are you talking about? 
darling. So in an article in the Daily Beast titled Harry Styles and Florence Pugh's Sex Scenes and Don't Worry Darling Make No Sense, writer Esther Zuckerman explains, in the movie, these moments just speak to the confused nature of the allegory that Wilde and screenwriter Katie Silberman have created. If they are making a film about the stifling weight of the patriarchy, why is their heroine having such a good time sexually? The character portrayed by the lusted after pop star is revealed to be a sniveling men's rights activist type who is threatened by his wife's career that he imprisons her so she quite literally cannot do anything but serve him so what is he doing uh serving her yeah <laughs> if anything like, yeah like the sex scene should be like super lackluster and just like <laughs> like was that good I for just... you when they turn over and they're like no <laughs> yeah like uh, are you trying like wild are you trying to convince me that incels are so good at sex yeah they just been they just haven't been given the opportunity they just put me in to coach these women put me in coach they <laughs> desire to please there. women yeah. and they don't want them to just lay there and take it yeah but the, the only <laughs> no. issue is that they haven't been given the chance Gabe that's what she's arguing I think actually what are you doing Olivia so ultimately it just has me asking like what is this film trying to tell us men are bad and incels are dangerous for sure agreed the patriarchy and toxic toxic masculinity are harmful but to who exactly because jack suffers by finally getting a job and pursuing a hobby that he's into (laughs) right and alice and the other ladies can lounge about in their day-to-day and it's honestly a sweet deal yeah in my opinion i love the little trolley I don't have to drive anywhere. I didn't just get to sit around. Yeah, and get to like just bask in capitalism. Like, let's go to the mall and watch this revolving woman sell us bathing suits. Absolutely. I get to sit at the pool and just lounge. I get to lounge in different places. And it's sunny. It never rains here. Yeah. Unless I maybe I wanted it to rain. Like, if you gave me the option to sign up, maybe I would. It felt very <laughs> love is blind and that they're like constantly being forced alcohol. Yes. And like this idea of paradise. But they're like drunk and all on drugs the entire time Always. to cope with yeah. this fake reality that's clearly not real and like they're drowning in it yeah um, there's also like the peggy who's always pregnant um i think that's her name she is always drinking and it, like part of it like could be a dig at the fact that it's supposed to be in the four fifth sixties. um but it's not it's in modern times so i think it was more of a joke that she's not actually pregnant there's yeah, no not real. There. she yeah. just is whatever that is um because imagine if you no. anyway um the problem is we never see any growth or progress from the other characters until the very end when chaos is erupting and so are the streetlights do the women start to question their place and i'd have peeped something was wrong when alice said my very unique meet cute was shared by two other women in this very small community yeah why weren't they like what the <laughs> if what? we're gonna make a simulation at least write <laughs> different I have NPC like scenarios, scenarios. yeah like if <laughs> D&D exists just like start yeah. <laughs> putting some of those in there like you telling me like these aren't nerds who play D&D yeah, or play Baldur's Gate couldn't stupid I was like this is lazy this yeah. is so lazy and that's not a knock against Baldur's Gate I play Baldur's Gate too it's a fun game but <laughs> you should know creatively that there are more than three stories that can exist for you're not that many people that you have in this simulation if that's you're trying so to not get caught like <laughs> you think they're not going to ask each other it's so sloppy yeah um and are they real like who's yeah. real we don't even know so instead we get a film ripe with gaslighting, not just from the men, but from the women too. And women who are so intent on maintaining the status quo in a world that, again, seems pretty sweet if you could just sign up for it and give consent um, that they'd sacrifice the lives of their friends to maintain it. Yeah, like Second Life is a, a simulated world in which you can be online and have fun time and not do work. <laughs> We could do that. That's I think that's what Meta wants to achieve is that we have a virtual version of our reality. And if like he made that, there are people who would want to do it, but it's because he's making it like this weird patriarchal, racist, capitalistic y I like fallout time without the bombs taking that all out, <laughs> uh, that it gets gross. So Yeah, there was like a, a Reddit discussion about like someone was like, what was the twist? And don't worry, darling. And someone explained it. And then they're like, but the kids are made up. So why couldn't the women also be made up? And then someone responded and was like, this is exactly why, like, rapists 
don't just have like virtual sex like they go after real women because it's about power it's about actually controlling real humans yeah so and, and the whole thing is that these are just gross men so yeah it, but who didn't even need didn't to be do dating. a good job of that yeah they didn't even need to be dating these women to put them in there you could just have literal serial killers and like kidnappers in this place who just stole a random woman and was like you're my wife now in this simulation like one of them had to be that <laughs> yeah at least no. one I think um, the woman who comes in last. Yeah. Because he's like flipping out. Yeah. Like he's like, husband, you said he's this wouldn't happen. The, like, he's, he's really like, with it. He's unhinged. He's something wrong with him. And she's like shook. Like, yeah. I don't think she knows who he is. Yeah. So maybe that's what that was. But it was weird. 